If you ask Berserk fans who the second strongest creature in all of Berserk is, they might argue that it's Void, or Skull Knight, or Griffith post-incarnation, or even Guts given his inhuman resistance to the concept of death. But nearly all of them will agree that the title of the strongest goes to one being so terrifying that not even Zod would want to face it in open battle. On the surface, it appears as harmless as an elf, but deep down, it's more powerful than an ogre, more magical than a kelpie, and more persistent than those damned spirits that keep chasing guts through the endless night. This being controls the idea of evil, pulls the god hand strings, was the actual trigger for the great roar of the astral world, and created the universe out of its own snot. We're talking, of course, about schnoz. What is this creepy, big-nosed, egg-like creature that has Berserk fans convinced that it's stronger than the strongest fighters in the whole series? Is its entire existence one big joke, or is there something more to it? Well, we're about to take a deep dive into just that topic, so sit tight and grab hold of your visors. This is Schnoz's Origins, Explored. It appears in Clip-Off and immediately establishes its dominance the almighty Schnoz's first appearance. In Berserk, there are many magical creatures who reflect both the bright and darker recesses of the human mind. On the bright side, we have things like elves, brownies, unicorns, centaurs, and the many denizens of Elfhelm, which itself is like a magnet that draws good astral creatures to its cherry blossom spirit tree. But, despite being a pure astral utopia where flowers are always in bloom, the food is always delicious, and the people are always happy, Elfhelm 2 has a dark underbelly where astral creatures that prefer to stay out of the light reside. The creatures of this region are strange and bizarre to say the least, with multiple anthropomorphic flora and fauna dotting the landscape, but none of it matches up to the insanity that is Clip-Off. If Elfhelm is the shining north pole of the astral world, then Klipoff is its miasmic south pole. And that is where we first meet this terrifying creature that haunts the dreams of every Berserk fan on a daily basis. In Chapter 215, after entering the densely wooded mountains near Enoch Village in an attempt to rescue Farnese and Casca, Guts and Co. realize that the place they're entering isn't exactly a jungle in the most traditional sense. Shirke explains this later in the chapter, but due to Griffith's incarnation in a body of flesh, the boundaries between the physical and the astral world have started overlapping one another. This is why the Black Swordsman party was able to find Flora's spirit tree mansion so easily, despite it having been surrounded by a protective barrier specifically meant to keep strangers out. It's also the reason for regular troll attacks on Enoch Village, where the appearance of a single troll used to be an uncommon event. What Guts and their party were entering now wasn't simply the jungle in the mountain near Enoch Village, it was the Astral Realm's region of darkness, Clip Off. In the Astral Realm, similar odes tend to flock together, thus creating regions of hyperactivity where the full powers of said domain within the otherwise can be brought to the fore. Warm odes are naturally attracted to warmth, this is one of the biggest reasons why a place like Elfhelm is home to so many elves and positively aligned astral creatures. Conversely, the stone forest of Elfhelm is the flip side of that warmth. Even though the dwarves of the forest work hard at their blazing forges day in and day out, warm is not the term you'd apply to their personality. They're gruff, to the point, and focused on the more risque aspects of the art of Arcana. Now take that idea and blow it up a thousand times in proportion, and you get Clip Off. This region of the astral world is a place that attracts the cold-hearted and more malign entities of the world. The landscape of Klipoff is dotted with flora that have tortured faces and haunting eyes. The air is filled with nightmare-inducing incubi, and the creatures of this domain would put your childhood nightmares about Sid's mutilated toy collection from Toy Story to shame. But the one that Miura chooses to focus on while introducing us to this miasmic corner of the astral world was an entity that is unfamiliar to us, yet looks all too familiar at the same time. Standing at the base of a tree, as if guarding it, was an egg-like creature with two eyes, two legs, two pointed ears, and a massive, well, schnoz. If this reminds you of something else from Berserk that is also egg-shaped, keep watching this video, your patience will be rewarded. But in the instance of Chapter 215, the moment the group catches sight of Schnoz, they're stunned into silence. Isidro makes a face that is half confused and half terrified, whilst expressing his personal horror by exclaiming, Face! Guts stands there looking stoic, but we're pretty sure he's getting flashbacks to the Eclipse having seen this beast show up. That's the real reason why he doesn't take a move to slice it in half. 
Shirke takes charge of the situation and uses her thought transference to communicate with the great schnoz, and it allows them to pass through and even appears surprised at its own rudeness. To make up for it, Schnoz plays Avoid the Burdock with Puck and Ivalira as Isidro looks on scared beyond death for their lives. He soon realizes how powerful an ally this Schnoz could be, given that it was no diffing every attack from Puck, who had established himself as being stronger than Guts by this point. He suggests they should train Schnoz and take him along, but alas, his words fall on deaf ears. The Black Swordsman group doesn't realize just how lucky it was to have been allowed to enter Clipoff by its guardian and gatekeeper Schnoz. Because if this were real life, they'd have likely been remnants of chewed up limbs by this point. Evil spirits of the mountains and rivers, what Schnoz is supposed to be. You'll pardon us for forgetting this detail in amongst our customary ritual to sing Schnoz's praises daily, but there is one thing in the Berserk manga that certainly lets us know what it is supposed to be. While the English translation simply calls Schnoz a spirit creature, the original manuscript lists it as being a Chimimorio, which is actually a rather dreadful type of evil spirit from ancient Chinese mythology. Given that references to a Chimimorio were first made in the ancient Chinese text Su Suan, which was published at least 500 years before the Common Era, every statement we make about it is to be taken with a grain of salt. After all, our Mandarin translation isn't perfect, but the general idea is that after Japanese explorers went to ancient China and documented their culture, history, and mythology, they brought back certain aspects of it and introduced them to Japanese culture, often unintentionally. The Chimimorio appears to be one such thing. Etymologically, it's a combination of two types of nature spirits, neither of which appear to be friendly. Chimis are a kind of mountain spirit, said to be more of the strange, miasmic atmosphere of the mountains. They often took bestial forms with human faces, and were believed to be a kind of malevolent yokai, or evil spirit, during the Heian era of Japan. Moryos were said to be a similar kind of spirit, but they would usually be found near rivers, rocks, and trees that surrounded the riverbed. The description of a Morio is rather chilling, as they are said to appear childlike with two feet, dark red skin, red eyes, beautiful hair, and a voice that resembles that of a human. We can see where Miura might have drawn inspiration for his version of the Chimi Morio from, as Schnoz the Great has no hands, but character design and location is likely where his inspirations ended, because while Schnoz appears mostly harmless in the one appearance it makes in the manga, a Chimi Morio is far less willing to play tag with the elves. According to Japanese myths, Chimi Morios are liable to eat the dead. And considering that one of their favorite pastimes is to fool humans, one cannot say for certain that they also aren't arranging their meals. Depictions of Morios in action show horrifying scenes of half-mangled, half-eaten humans grasped in the jaws of a Morio, mid-consumption. A Chimi Morio is an amalgamation of both of these terrifying creatures, and when you take that into account, you can see how Miura's Chimi Morio feels tamer in comparison. As we mentioned before, Schnoz has a single appearance in the entire Berserk manga. It shows up at the entranceway to Clipoff, plays around with Puck and Ivalira, and then disappears, never to be seen again. Speaking realistically, it doesn't show any great powers either, as you might have realized by now that the whole first section was basically us playing up the usual Schnoz rhetoric. He doesn't so much as make the group go around in circles through some kind of time loop fog magic, let alone eating one of them in rather grisly fashion. All in all, Schnoz appears to be about as harmful as a slightly breezy gust of wind. So why in the world does the Berserk fandom love him so much? Well, it might have something to do with the fact that he looks kind of like a live Behelet. Is it a Crimson Behelet brought to life that we just don't know about? The real reason for Schnoz's popularity. Remember how we said that Schnoz isn't the only egg-like thing that's famous from Berserk? Well, some fans think that that isn't a coincidence. Eggs actually play a very important thematic role in Berserk, as some of its most transformative events take place due to the hatching of an egg. The incarnation ceremony is completed when the egg-shaped apostle hatches and releases Femto into the world with the flesh of the demon child and the face of Griffith. In this instance, the egg is used as a cosmic egg metaphor because with Griffith's incarnation, the world begins to change. His rebirth is what triggers the overlapping of the astral and physical worlds, which is why we meet Schnoz in the first place. The incarnation ceremony is also a birthing metaphor, but a better analogy for that would be Griffith's Eclipse, where we see him activate the egg-shaped behelet to trigger his own reincarnation as a god hand. 
When Griffith uses the Behalit and sacrifices his Band of the Falcon in exchange for absolute power, his body of flesh is encased in a glowing cocoon that looks like an egg while his soul descends into the depths of the abyss. Once he joins up with the idea of evil, Griffith's reincarnation egg hatches to reveal his ultimate existence as the Wings of Darkness, Femto. These two things make Schnoz's character design choice very curious, because it is the only other egg-shaped creature slash artifact in all of Berserk. Nothing. Not the Incubi, the other apostles, pseudo-apostles, or the many horrifying denizens of the realm of Klipoff have a design quite like Schnoz's. And if you think about the Morio myths and take into consideration the fact that those beings were said to be crimson colored in all appearances, then an even grimmer prospect begins simmering at the back of our minds. What if Schnoz is a crimson behelet that has somehow come to life? Think about it for a moment. When Griffith first shows his crimson behelet to Guts, he claims that the fortune teller who gave it to him told him that the owner of the behelet was destined to rule the world in exchange for their own flesh and blood. Achimi Morio is said to play mind games with its targets deep within the woods before they give up and it can finally devour their flesh and blood. Griffith triggers his own eclipse in the middle of a lake west of Midland's borders, and that lake is awfully close to a mountainous stretch of woods. Moreover, we must also consider the design similarities between the two things. Apart from its legs and ears, Schnoz can be said to be identical to an active behelet. A behelet is basically a rock-like object that has a misshapen human face engraved on it. The only time this face is in proper shape is when its owner's blood and despair flows into it, rearranging its features and triggering the activation of an interstice. The behelet face then becomes tortured. It cries tears of blood, and the rest is handled by the god hand. Though you might say we've just disproven our own theory because Schnoz doesn't have a mouth, well, take a closer look at all of its appearances. Though it doesn't open its word hole for the entirety of its time on screen, Schnoz does have a mouth which is clearly outlined by Miura in Chapter 215. So, considering the possibility that it is a live Crimson Behelet isn't entirely baffling, considering so many contextual hints exist within the manga. But the reality is that Schnoz is feared and revered as the Almighty not because this contextual conjecture is true, but because it's entirely ironic. See, the reason why Schnoz is as famous as it is is simple. It was the original Berserk meme. Back in 2003, when social media wasn't a part of our daily lives yet, people would often discuss their favorite shows, games, and books, etc. on online forums. And one such forum for Berserk was Skullknight.net. The website is still active today, but back then, when Chapter 215 had just come out, it was at a fever pitch. And the creator of the website decided to release not one, but two troll articles discussing why Schnoz, this behelet imposter that probably ranks lower than a brownie on the actual power scale, was pulling all the strings of everybody behind the scenes, including the idea of evil. The reason behind this is rather simplistic and one that we do understand. To introduce a place he went on to call the Womb of Darkness and Slan's Play Pit, Okay, maybe not that second one. Mira chose this unassuming little softy as his vessel. Schnoz was probably the most out of place creature in the entire clip off section of the manga, despite its real world inspiration earning it a more deserved place than the trolls, in our opinion. But such is meme currency, dear viewers, and as a wise man once said, they'll forget the scene, but they'll never forget the meme. It's been two decades since the Chimi Morio was officially christened as Schnoz. Berserk has moved far away narratively from what it was in Chapter 215, and to be honest, better meme moments have occurred in the series since then. But such is the allure of the almighty Schnoz that before we started working on this video, we asked everyone in the office what they thought its actual name was, and no one could give us the right answer. Schnoz is Mandela affecting its way into the hearts and minds of every Berserk fan, where they now see him wherever they see a behelet in the series. And to be completely honest with you, we're right there with them. Though we don't expect Schnoz to play any sort of role in the climactic arc of Berserk, people will still claim Guts finally getting to rest from his struggle was also because of Schnoz. And that will be the day the world will truly end. Marvelous Verdict But until that day comes, we're afraid that you're going to have to do all your apocalypse planning using this video as a reference point. Schnoz is the perfect example of how things can take on a life of their own these days, because we are 100% sure Kentaro Miura did not intend for it to become as massive as it has. And yet, an outline of Schnoz was front and center of the memorial mural drawn in honor of the artist at Napoli Comic Con a few months back. 
Schnoz is the straw that stirs the drink for the cultured berserk consumer. But what do you guys think about the little monster? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.